Chatham and Lennington Riding. I'm so happy that you have joined us this morning for Coffee with Max. Thank you for being here. Again, as I said, I'm very surprised that there's a lot of people that came out today. Now, I decided to join and run with this party because I learned that the People's Party holds strong to their founding principle of respect, freedom, fairness, and responsibility. This sets them apart from the other parties in Canada. When I look at their platform, I was impressed to see how honest and transparent the policies are. And you can check that on our website. Our platform has been shaped by what is important to Canadian values, not focus groups. In our platform, we cover policies like provincial equalization payments, firearms, supply management, internal trade, healthcare, foreign policies, freedom of expression. I Immigration, the environment, Aboriginal issues, and veteran issues. We know that when Canadians read and understand our policies, they will see we are serving their best interests as Canadians and that the People's Party is the true Conservative Party in Canada. You see, Andrew Scheer has changed his party away from conservative values and his own word, call it a centrist party, a centrist looking to the left. It, now it is reported that one of his rallies on Saturday, uh, an invited reporter from Rebel Media, was handcuffed, wrapped up, and actually arrested. An infringement of his right, the conservatives should be ashamed at their attempt to curtail free speech. I believe that political correctness is a big problem in our country. Canadians feel that they are being, uh, they're not being heard, and they feel that their rights to voice their concerns is invalidated and their free speech is being restricted. The People's Party is the only party that will give them a voice and protect their free speech. I will touch up on a couple of policies. For the environment, we believe in clean air, clean water, and clean environment. We believe in being good stewards of our country. We are the only party that reject climate alarmism and will not increase taxes to fight this fake global warming scares. <laughs> Any consensus on global warming isn't scientific, it is political. For nearly a century, we have been continually warned about looming climate crisis next year, in five years, in 10 years. None of this prediction has ever come true. They have a 100% track record of being proven wrong. The theory of supposed greenhouse gases and global warming pivots on the amount of available nitrogen in the atmosphere. A group of scientists from the University of California now know that an infinite atmospheric nitrogen is only a small part of the equation as they discover that storehouses of nitrogen exist in the bedrock of Earth, and up to 31 teragrams are mobilized annually. If they continue touting their old science theory, they are not just being wrong, they are being completely dishonest to you. Now, the liberal government wants to extort more of your money in the form of carbon tax that will somehow save the planet. That is laughable at best we will get rid of the carbon tax. When elected, I will ensure that the erosion issues at Lake Erie will be tackled and an effective plan will be implemented through the cooperation of all that are involved. On immigration, immigration is an important issue and the People's Party has the right way of handling it. We believe that our policy should be economically benefit all 
of the Canadian citizen. We should prioritize Canada's economic interest and not jeopardize Canadian values. They tried to brand the Reform Party in the 90s of racism because they suggested lowering immigration levels from 250,000 to 150,000. This isn't racist. This makes economic sense. Why should we put the undue financial burden on Canadians in pursuit of humanitarian goals? We will reduce the total number of immigrants and refugees that Canada accepts every year from 350,000 to between 100 and 150,000. We know Canadians are angry. That is why former conservative, former liberal, liberal, former MVP are joining us by hundreds of thousands. Canadians don't want the same fake elections, promises, and lies. They want a party with true principle leader that will lead Canada with sound policies. Please consider supporting us and donating to our cause. And make and order your sign. Now, without any delay, I would like to introduce to you the People's Party leader, Maxime Bernier. Of 
20 billion dollars. And then Bushir is saying that he's not able to balance a budget in two years. He's saying that, you know, it's too difficult to look at our budget, but I can tell you that we will do that. And that's a very important commitment for us. I'm not telling you that I will lower your taxes and after that I will balance a budget. I'm telling you that we will balance a budget and after that, after two years, with all the surplus, we will be able to lower your taxes. But the most important is to be responsible. Because today, the only interest on our debt, it's about $26 billion a year. So imagine what we can do with $26 billion. Now we have to pay the interest on our debt. Just that we do added $70 billion in four years on our debt. Our debt is now $700 billion. And then Bushir wants to do the same thing. You know, he's running to be the Prime Minister, and he's running to have a mandate of four years to be the Prime Minister, and at the same time he's telling Canadian that uh, he will balance the budget in five years. <laughs> the mandate is only four years, and he's telling you that he will balance the budget in, four, in five years. So, the, the, the NDP, the Liberals, the Conservative, the Green, won't balance the budget in one term, and that's the most important. And we know what to do. We know what to do to have a fair policy, because as you know, our four principles are individual freedom, personal responsibility, fairness, and respect. We know what to do. I was reading the news this morning, and I said since the beginning that we must cut foreign aid, and we can save four billion dollars there. Today, the news, because it may be very popular, because as you know, the conservative now are doing a lot of polling to know what you want to hear, and after that, they will repeat it. That's the way they're doing politics. We don't need any polling or survey to know what we believe in. We believe in more freedom and in a limited government. But the conservative, which I'm wish here right now, that's not the same conservative under Stephen Harper. They don't know what they believe in. They are doing a lot of polling, and they try to please you, and that's why the Conservative Party is a centrist party, and that's Andrew Scheer who said that. And their goal is to split the liberal vote. That's their goal. But it's so popular when you say you must cut foreign aid and bring back that money home and help our Canadian, Canadians first, that uh, today Andrew Scheer is saying that. But it will cut only $1.5 billion. So if um, on, on five, six billion dollars. So, and it's the same thing on the corporate welfare. I said, you know, we must cut corporate welfare. It's not fair to tax a small business entrepreneur here and forcing that person, uh, that entrepreneur, to pay taxes and giving that to a huge corporation like Bombardier or GM. It is not fair. And a fair tax policy it is to have one tax rate at 10% for every business and no more subsidies to businesses. So it is popular. So Andrew Scheer said, you know, I'll cut and we can save $5 billion there. But Andrew Scheer said, oh, what Maxim is saying, it is popular. So I'll cut a billion dollar in uh, corporate welfare. So if a corporation is profitable, they don't need. That corporation doesn't need your money. But if a corporation is not profitable, why will we, taxpayers, take the risk? If they are not able to manage their own business, they won't be able to manage their own business with your money in their coffer. So corporate welfare, the corporate welfare is bad. We must stop that. And actually, when I'm saying that, the entrepreneurs in this country agree with it. The Federation of Independent Business in Canada, every year, they're giving their recommendations to the federal government to be able to have tax policies that would be more efficient for businesses. And what they're saying, cut corporate welfare, one flat tax on business, less regulation, that's our platform. And we know that the entrepreneurs in this country are proud they don't have time to pay a lobbyist in Ottawa for asking for 
more subsidies. They just have time to work on their business and growing their business and, and giving more jobs to Canadians. So they would be able, they will have more of their own money in their own pockets. So that's how we were doing politics. Instead of telling you, we're going to give you a tax credit for that, a tax credit for that, and actually if you add all the promises that the traditional parties did, and the cost of that, of the saving for Canadians, it's $100 billion, all the other parties together. And we still have 20 days before the election. <laughs> but we're not doing that. We're saying, you know, we have tough decisions. We will balance a budget, cutting foreign aid, cutting a, a corporate welfare, cutting the CBC, a billion dollars there. So, and we're telling everything we must do to be able to balance the budget because that would be fair for the future generations. And we cannot afford the credit card in Ottawa is full. And you know, we cannot spend our way to prosperity. We know that if we want more economic growth, we need more private sector investment. And if we have more private sector investment, we'll have more uh, growth and job in this country. So spending and spending and spending, it is not a stimulus for the economy. It is a sedative for the economy because they will have to pay for that. So that being said, we want to do politics differently. Well, we are telling you what we will do to balance the budget and after would be able to lower your taxes. But the other politicians are saying the opposite. We will give you more money, and we cannot afford that. We'll increase the deficit, we'll increase our debt, and maybe a day we'll be able to balance a budget. So that's irresponsible. And that's the same thing for immigration. They don't want to have any discussion on immigration. And actually, when I delivered that speech on immigration, I was in Mississauga. And in the crowd, we have people from different faiths, Muslim, Jewish, Christian. We had also people from different ethnicity, and uh, coming from uh, India, coming from Pakistan, coming from Africa. And all these people are Canadians, and they want us to have an immigration system that would be sustainable for the country. And what we are saying, you know, and we're the only party, we are saying that we want fewer immigrants. But the most important, we want to be able to have more economic immigrants, a person that will come here because we need that skill and experience. So not 26%. Right now, on 310 immigrants that will receive this year, only 26% are economic immigrants. 74% of them are not economic immigrants. And the huge majority of that 74% are refugees. And we cannot, we cannot tolerate that, that people who are crossing our border illegally in Quebec, in my own province, at the Roxham Road. So what I'm saying, it's easy to solve that. It's very easy. We don't want to build a wall. We just want to have a little fence that will be there. And we want our RCMP officer to be there. And instead of Helping them, helping them to cross our border illegally. We just want them to be there, and the RCMP officials will tell them, you want to cross our border? It's OK. You can cross our border if you want, but you need to do that at an official point of entry, like everybody. And, uh, and you just need to work another 55, maybe, maybe uh, 100 meters, just over there at the official port of entry. And if they are crossing the border over there and they're asking to uh, be a refugee in our country, we say, you know, you're coming from a third safe country in the US, your life is not in danger, so you cannot cross our border, you cannot come to Canada. And 45,000 of them cross our border illegally the last two years, and the cost for our society is $350 million a year, plus the cost for the provincial government for social services. So we need to stop that. But at the same time, we are receiving more refugees, absolute number, than the US 10 times bigger than us. We are receiving more refugees 
absolute number than all European countries. It is unsustainable. And these refugees are not real refugees, or fake refugees. And I'm not saying that. It's the Department of Immigration that said that at least 40% of them, 40% of them will have to be deported in a couple of years from now because the process is very long. And it will be very difficult to deport them because maybe in two years, four years, they will have kids, they will go at school. So we need to stop that. We need to stop that to be sure to help the real refugees where their life is in danger in this, some country, in a camp, and uh, not the fake one where their life is not in danger. So these people are jumping the queue and we are Canadians, we are generous, we need to help the real one. And that's our policy. Stop what happened at the Roxanne Road, helping the real refugees, having fewer refugees, and also at the same time, more economic immigrants that will help us to build this country and they will be able, you know, when a person has a job, it's easier for that person to integrate our society. If you don't have a job, it's a little bit harder. So we, that's why we want more skilled immigrants that will come here. They will have a job, they will be able to integrate our society, and that's important. But also we need to change our point system. We had in the past a point system. You know, if you, have, if you speak English or if you speak French, you have more points. Right now, it is not the case anymore. So an immigrant can come here and without speaking English or French, it is harder when you don't speak the language to integrate that society. So let's be back to the point system that we had a couple of years ago. So it's not a revolution. When there's 49% of the population, 49% of Canadians that want fewer immigrants, we're not radical. Only 6% of Canadians want more immigrants. And all the other leaders are asking for more and more and more. And it won't be sustainable. At 350,000 a year, that would be the number of immigrants that we will receive in 2021. 350,000 a year per capita. Per capita. Canada will receive more immigrants than any other Western countries. We'll be at the top. And at 150,000 a year, like John said, at 150,000 a year per capita, we receive the same level of immigrants than the US and every European country. So we're not anti-immigration. We are for immigration, but we are anti-mass immigration. That's a huge difference. And we want our borders to be respected. So that's so important that we are engaging in discussion on that. And you know what, it's not the first time because Preston Manning did that 25 years ago when they created the Reform Party of Canada. And everybody was saying, you know, Preston is a racist and the Reform Party, that's a racist party. So as you know, that's not true. Preston was not and is not a racist. And that's the same thing for us. We just want to have that discussion on immigration. And every other Western country are having right now that discussion on immigration. Because it is not a right to be Canadian. It is a privilege. And that's so important for us. So let's, and we are asking for having a face-to-face -face interview with every immigrant that will come to Canada. We did that in the past. Why do we need to have an interview with them? First of all, we want to know them. And we want also to ask them questions about our values and their values, if they share Canadian values. And I have always a question about what are the Canadians' values? We all know that. Equality before the law, equality between men and women, separation between the state and religion, pluralism, respect, free market, freedom, free speech, uh, free, free, freedom of expression, freedom of religion. That's our Canadian values. And that's, by the way, also the Western civilization values. So let's have a discussion. Let's have a discussion with uh, our newcomers that want to come to our country, like we had in the past. So that's not radical. That's not radical. That's only normal. 
You know, when you invite somebody in your house, you usually you know, you know that person pretty well. But that's the same thing with the immigration system. So we want the immigration system to be sustainable, and we want also our immigration system to be there to fulfill our economic needs. And that was the case in the past. That's not the case right now. So that's why I'm looking forward to debate and to have a discussion with uh, the other leaders next Monday. I'll be part of the national debate. And actually, that's our big challenge. Our biggest challenge as a new political party, it's not our platform. The more we speak about our platform, the more we are out there and explaining to Canadians what we believe in and based on our principles, the more support we have. Our biggest challenge is to be known, and that's why it's important, uh, our participation in the international uh, debate. So yes, because 52% of the population said that they are ready to vote for a new party at the federal level. And we are the only new party at the federal level. But they don't know that we exist. So that's why what I'm asking you, go on our website, read our platform over there. It's not buzzword and, uh, you know, it's uh, strong policies, bold policies for a freer and a more prosperous country. Go on our website, People's Party of Canada, let's see. And also, you know, we like competition. Go and see the, the website of the Liberals, of the Conservative, and you see, try to find their platform. It would be a bit difficult. <laughs> but for us, it's a strong platform based on our four key principles, individual freedom, personal responsibility, respect, and fairness. And I think people like that because we are coherent. We don't try to please everybody. You know, we don't try that. We know that we have the best ideas, and we just want to promote our ideas. When you believe in people, when you believe in free markets, when you believe in freedom, when you believe in free enterprise, freedom of choice, you cannot be wrong. So we have the best ideas, we just have to be out there to speak about that. And yes, if, I don't know, on the climate change, we have only maybe right now 20% of the population that agree with our position that there's no climate emergency. The more we speak about that, the more people will be on our side. But if you're a traditional politician, usually you will speak about a subject when you have 40, 45 percent of people on your side. So you, you're gonna, you will start to speak about it. But no, if we have only 20 percent of the population on our side, we know that we have the best ideas, we'll speak about it. And the more we speak, the more support we'll have. And I'll give you an example with the cartel for their repo to be eggs. When I started to speak about that a couple of years ago, only five, six percent of the population agreed with my position. But the more I was out there to speak about that, now if you do a poll, it would be maybe 40, 45 percent. Because we have to explain that. And that's what I like in politics right now. We have to be out there and to explain our policies and to inform Canadians about what we want to do. And in the cartel, you know, I said it's unfair that we are paying twice the price for milk, poultry, and eggs. You can just cross the border, a dozen of eggs, 99 US cent, here in Canada, three dollars or something like that. So it's more than double the price. So it's unfair. And I don't want to pander to a special interest group, these are their reproducers. There are 19,000 people in Canada. I prefer to work for 36 million Canadians. And you know, I'm telling them that I have the most dairy producers in my riding in boats. 5,000 of them. 5,000 of them. Do you think they will vote for me? I don't think so. Because they want to keep their privilege. And they have a privilege. They represent 10% of the farmers in Canada. 90% of the farmers in Canada are not under that cartel. They can export their products. They're under a free market system. That's a socialist system that Pierre Elliott Trudeau, Trudeau brought in more than 45 years ago. They can fix the price, and they are doing that, and they are fixing the production, and they just have the right to produce for the Canadian market. But they want to keep that privilege, fixing the price, and every year the price of milk, poultry, and eggs is going up and up and up. 
But we know that they produce good and excellent products. We want them to be able to export. And right now they cannot export because they're receiving a huge subsidies from us, from the consumers. And it's unfair, so that's why they cannot export. But when we'll abolish that, they will be able to export their products, we will have to buy back their quotas, and we'll be able also to be free to buy eggs or cheese or milk uh, from other countries without any tariffs, and the price will go down. But I'm telling, I'm saying that to the American producer, and they're not so happy with that, but I understand them. I understand the, the human, it is human nature. You want to keep that privilege. They don't want to hear, they don't want to compete. Because when you're in a free market and you have to compete, that's a little bit more risky. Uh, and they don't want to take that risk. So, and I'm saying to them, and actually the, the conservative candidate in my writing, it is a dairy producer. And I'm very pleased because I can say to people in my writing, you know, this guy is in politics to defend his own privilege. And he's not working for you. If you want to work for Canadians, you must be able to abolish that cartel. But it's too bad that the conservatives that are supposed to be for free markets, the NDP, that are supposed to help the poor. You know, the cost of that is $400 a year for a Canadian family, that cartel. If you're the NDP, your goal is to help the poor. But because of that, it's a kind of a regressive tax on the poor. You are taxing the poor and giving all that money to the rich producers. So the NDP, they don't want to fight that. Like they don't want to fight corporate welfare. You know, they're supposed to be for the small business entrepreneur, but they're okay with corporate welfare because, you know, the NDP they have a huge union, uh, Southern Ontario with GM and, 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 uh, and other corporations that receive receive uh, big grants and subsidies. So that's why they're not against corporate welfare. But that's the way we are doing politics. What I'm telling you is we are different than the other ones. And we are we are authentic also. I don't try to not answering a question when a journalist answers a question or ask me a question. And I'm, I'm there to inform the population. But also they call me Mad Max and sometimes I'm mad. I'm mad about the media, you know, the mainstream media. And I'll give you an example. I was in BC last week. We did a rally over there. We had 500 people in BC in a rally. We don't have any organization on the ground. We are not paying people on the ground to call people. Do you want to call Maxine? No. We're sending an email, and our volunteers and our people are renting a place. And we had to change the place because we had 500 people. It was not in the news. I had CBC and Global the same night in Vancouver with their cameras and looking at the crowd. And at the end, nothing in the news that night. The day after, I was in Calgary. I did the rally over there. 550 people over there in Calgary. We had the CBC and Radio Canada, French, and also CTV. They were there, they saw the crowd. I answered a question, I did a scrum after that. Nothing in the news. So no, nothing in the news. But Andrew Shio was in Calgary two days before me. He did a rally. He had 100 people there, 100 in Calgary. If you're a real conservative party, you must have a lot of support in Calgary, in Alberta. Only 100, and we had 550 people there. The media were there, the media covered it, and it was in the news that night. So yes, something is happening with the national media and mainstream media, but I know that Canadians are also, you are able to have your news from social media. And actually, if you go, if you don't believe me, you go on social media, on YouTube, Rally Maxim Vancouver, you'll see some uh, photos and videos of uh, this event. And uh, we were Sunday in a, a Hamilton, and we had 600 people over there. So something is happening. We're not alone. We're not at 2% in the pool, like they're saying. I'm supposed to be at 2% for the last eight months. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing happened. I started that party at 2%, and I'm still at 2%.
and I travel, I think, five times across the country. <laughs> so I can tell you that I don't believe that because when I'm traveling, we have people like this kind of a common sense revolution. And after the national debate, that would be a huge opportunity for us to be out there to speak about our platform. And I will do that. And people think, oh, you know, Bernie would be crazy and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, no, I'll be calm. I have a tie. I will have a tie. I'll be there. I'm going to smile, answer the questions. I'll speak slowly. And <laughs> after my answer, I will ask the questions to the other leader. I will listen. And I will have a discussion. So that's important. And on two hours debate, two hours debate, I will be able to speak 18 minutes. So that's why it's important, 18 minutes. So people are saying to me, Maxime, you must be uh, there and aggressive against the other leaders. And I won't have time for that. In 18 minutes, I will have time to speak about our platform. That's the most important. And at the end, to ask questions to the other leader. Stay focused, because the mainstream media don't speak about us. They don't. In Quebec, it's the same thing. In French and in English Canada, it's the same thing. So it's a huge challenge. They ignore us. Because they don't want to have the debates on free speech in this country. They don't want to have the debate on immigration. They don't want to have the debate on corporate welfare. They don't want to have the debate about, you know, abolishing foreign aid. They don't want to have this debate. We're supposed to be radical. But the name of our party is the People's Party of Canada. We are putting the people first, so that's easy. And we are doing that, and we we won't, we won't do any compromise. We won't push for our ideas, and at the end, we'll, we'll be able to make a huge surprise the 21st of October. So that being said, I think you're here, you may have some questions. I want to take some time to answer some of your questions, and let's have a discussion together. Thank you. Who's going to ask the first question? Yes. Okay, Mr. Bernier. Uh, you may not be leading in the polls, but you're definitely uh, leading in common sense. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is doing business in Canada. 
Thank you for asking. First of all, as you know, we don't have a free trade agreement signed with the U.S., and we must have that. So the most important is, as you remember, President Trump was asking a couple of months ago to, for us to put on the table the cartel in Bill Dairy and Poultry because he wanted his producers to be able to export their milk, poultry, and eggs in Canada. Everybody, every other party, and the uh, Trudeau government said, no, no, we won't put that on the table. So our relationship with the President Trump and the US would be to be sure to sign that free trade agreement and go back on the go back at the table and putting that cartel and saying to President Trump, yes, we need to abolish that cartel because it's a win-win. It's a win for the US and it's a win for us. It's a win for our consumers. They will save a lot of money. It's a win for the producers because we'll do that on a transition period and we'll have to bring back their quota. They will have time to use the money for being more productive. So the first step, put that cartel on the table and have a discussion about it. And I think that will help our economic relation and that will help us to be able to have a signed deal with the US. Yes. So, Josie, uh, before I ask my question, I, I want to commend you for something. I, I've watched you in a number of interviews, and without exception, the people interviewing you have tried desperately to bait you, <laughs> to call you a racist, to insult you, and at no time have you lost your cool. You, you've managed to handle their attacks, and that's really what they've been, um, very, very eloquently and very reasonably. And most importantly, you have facts. Yeah. You haven't come out with flowery language. Your, your, your answers were direct. They were to the point, And they contained solid uh, strategies. So I want to commend you for that. Uh, my question is, my question for you is, uh, I personally see the greatest challenge and hurdle uh, is simply getting the word out, reaching Canadians. I think that the platform you have sells itself, but it needs to get into the hands and minds of the public. And so I wanted to ask you, what can we do as individuals and citizens to step this up to a higher level? But first of all, you are doing a lot right now. You know, we built this party with you, and we have only six persons at the head office that help us to build this party across the country. If you look with the at the Conservative Party of Canada, they have 150 <coughs> employees at their head office. So we are able to build this party across the country with uh, our candidates and our writing association and volunteers like you all across the country. So first of all, I want to thank you for that. Second, yes, you must be out there on social media speaking to your friends, your family, and about our platform. Just telling them you go see that uh, website, the People's Party of Canada, and you see that we're doing politics differently. I count on you to speak, up, speak to your, your friends, your family, your colleagues, that would be important. Help our candidates, help our candidates, and uh, you know, you can be a volunteer with them, you can do some phone calls for them, you can have a sign <coughs> on your, on your uh, property. So, but also at the same time, We'll do a, we will, because of you, because of your generosity, we put aside half a million dollars. We were able to put aside half a million dollars saving that we will use to have had on TV. 
So I just did a ad, and yes, coming uh, next week or a couple of days from now, not at CBC, you won't see on that at CBC, <laughs> but it would be at CTV. A 30 second ad, the cost for a ticket, and it would be at prime time. Prime time, 30 second ad at CTV, the cost for a 30 second is $4,000. So we'll be able to be there on the news and with our ad over there. And the goal of that is just to say to Canadians, we exist. <laughs> I'm next to we exist, go see our platform. It's a good ad, simple one. So that will help also. That will help to give us more visibility and also maybe more credibility. Because when you're on TV, you know, you're a real political party and the people will see me also at the debate. So I believe that it will shift after the debate, before the election. I think more people will be able to hear from us and with your help, that's why I think we'll be able to. And I'm saying that uh, very honestly. I think we don't do any polling, and by the way. We don't spend money on poll and polling and so. But I can tell you that we can have the balance of power because I believe that it would be a minority government. And if it's a minority government, we can have the balance of power. I'm looking at what happened in BC. In BC, they have over there uh, NDP minority government. But three Greens control the government. And we can elect more than three of our candidates for sure. So we see, I don't know, we're gonna elect between one and 338, you know, I don't know, but it's going very well. In Alberta, we have a lot of support. In my own province in Quebec, here in Ontario, we'll see what will happen. But we can have the balance of power. And if we have the balance of power, we will judge the government policy by policy, legislation by legislation. And if their proposal is in line with our values, we'll vote for them. If not, we'll vote against them. So no compromise with our platform and our values and our principle. So we can have a big impact. We can have a big impact in a couple of days from now if we work all together. So my, my uh, advice is uh, be out there, not only on social media, be out there and don't be shy, speak about our platform. The more people will be able to listen what we believe in, I agree with you, the more support we'll have. Thank you. <coughs> yes. I was wondering, maybe a few people are wondering, to the end here, was Jody Wilson very bold in all the SNC scam? Scandal of the liberal government. Is she possibly a spy for the conservatives? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Eh? No. Oh, okay, sir. No, I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, you know, my seat in the house, the last parliament, <coughs> my seat mate was Elizabeth May. And uh, so I had a discussion with Elizabeth May, but not with Judy. And I said to Elizabeth, I said, Elizabeth, you're going to be my seat mate for this yeah. session. Yeah. And we won't speak about policy yeah. because we won't agree. Yeah. And so let's speak about other things. And she's a nice lady, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, she told me that she she has a new husband. I told her that yeah. the same thing for me. Yeah. We had a good discussion, but not about policy. Yeah. And because I didn't want to, <laughs> you know, I want to stay and have a good relationship with her. But I didn't speak with uh, with uh, Judy. And also, I can tell you that people <laughs> asked me, Maxine, did you try to have? your former conservative colleagues coming to support you and cross the floor and being with you with the PPC. Yeah. My answer is no, I didn't have time to call them. My focus is to build this party and I didn't have their support when I was running for the leadership of the Conservative Party of Canada. Only five conservative MP supported me on 99 conservative MP. So, but 49% of the membership supported me at that time. But that was past, and I can tell you that I'm very happy, very happy that I'm not the leader of the Conservative Party of Canada, very happy that we created that, that party, very happy that we have a lot of support across the country. And yes, I'm here to win this election, but I'm also here for the long term. So thank you for your answer. Very happy. I'm very likely that Jody Wilson Ray Ball was a spy for the Conservative <laughs> <laughs> The timing of the scandal, well, I don't know. Yes. Maybe only the Prime Minister knows. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thank you. Um, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, you vowed we're going to have a better relationship with our veterans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I was just wondering, balancing.
balancing the budget at all, how we were gonna, well, essentially balance, balancing the budget, but also our defense spending issues. Yeah, okay. we've thrown a lot of money and not getting anywhere. From the it's getting laughable. Wow. What we are seeing, if you go on our website and our platform, all our policies, maybe the majority of them, is focused on board reforms that we need to, to do in this country. And it's about cutting, it's about being more efficient, it's about respecting the Constitution. So, but we, we don't speak about, uh, we, we did speak about our veterans, and yes, we have a policy on our veterans. We will reinvest in our own jurisdiction, in our own responsibility. So our, one of our responsibilities <coughs> is with the veterans, and yes, you're right, there's two kinds of veterans right now. The veterans before 2006 and the one after 2006. The one that had a lifetime pension and the other one that received a lump sum and that was not fair. So we'll change that. Everybody will be able to have a long, long, uh, long-term uh, pension. So that's too important. That's our report. That will cost <coughs> some money. But because we'll be able to save on foreign aid, on, a, on a, uh, foreign aid and on the CBC a billion dollars, we're going to be able to save also on corporate welfare. We'll be able to implement that. But our policy to reinvest in our Canadian forces and, and being able to invest 2% of our GDP in our defense, like we did, we signed a deal with our NATO allies that we will spend 2% of our GDP on defense. We're spending right now 0.4% <coughs> on our GDP. So we need to increase that. That would be costly. So that would be a commitment in our first budget. In our first budget, we say our goal is to invest 2% of our GDP in our defense. So we'll do that step by step. The first two years, the increase would be very, very small. But after, when we balance the budget, we would be able to increase that. And our goal is every year to increase that by 0.2% every year until we achieve the 2% target. That would be incremental, and that's important. Because our surplus, when we will have surplus, we go to lower your taxes and be strong in our own jurisdiction. So reinvesting in our own responsibility, like veterans and like uh, our defense. Yes. First of all, thank you so much for taking time to be here. Truly appreciate it. Um, I signed up back on day one. So you're a funding member. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
legislation mm -hmm. that are in charge because at the federal level the federal government is in charge of the divorce act and the provincial government usually the, the, all the wedding is uh, it's in the marriage it's a uh, provincial legislation so we need, we need to have discussion between the provincial government and the federal government and we're ready to do that i understand your point and yes uh, we can have a parliamentary committee that will have hearings with experts and with canadians 
and looking at what would be the best way to uh, answer that, uh, that request. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. My name is Mike Brainerd. I'm from Dealtown. I'm worried about the youth. Uh, we see here in the town of Kent, uh, houses went up to $300,000 for a kid to buy. How is it going to be possible? I just I think I heard Trudeau say recently, uh, Canadians are just going to have to get used to not being able to buy a house in any of the major centers. Toronto, Halifax, Montreal. Like, what about the Canadian dream? What about a guy going out and going to work and be able to buy a family, raise a family? This seems to be getting further and further away. That's why I'm here today, but no, really. You know, these jobs are not coming back. They're not going to China, they're going to Mexico. What are we going to do about these youth? And they're graduating with an exorbitant amount of debt from college and university. Like, the, the young Canadians in this country are getting slammed. There's no, I don't see any relief for them. And we will tax them more in a couple of years from now to pay for our deficit. So that's all, also another point. So on our thing, on our thing, the most important is to, you know, uh, it's a shared jurisdiction with provinces, and they have some zoning regulation that are affecting the price of house, houses in this country, but also immigration. We know that 41% of our immigrants are going to Toronto and Vancouver. That, it is a pressure for uh, housing and prices to go up. So with our immigration policy, we'll have fewer of them and we'll take care of them. Second, uh, we cannot, there's the inflation also. The inflation is there and it's very, so our policy on inflation, it's a policy with the Bank of Canada. Instead of having a target of 2% inflation, why 2% why inflation? Why not 20% inflation? If inflation is good, why not 50% inflation? Inflation is bad, it is a hidden tax. The Bank of Canada must have a target of 0% inflation. Like that, you're gonna keep your purchasing power and the value of your money. So that's part of our policy. At the same time, we want to give them more of their own money. After balancing the budget in two years, we'll lower taxes with our tax reform. Our tax reform. It would be only two tax rates, and Canadians will save about $30 billion with our tax reform. So it is a comprehensive tax reform, and we'll do that after balancing the budget. So yes, that's a lot of uh, policies that can help, but there's no uh, magic solution for that. We have to put all these uh, solutions together, and that will help. Thank you very much. Um, Maybe the last one. one question, uh, because Max has a uh, couple of uh, events to go going, so okay. five more minutes for... Okay, the last one, maybe? Yeah. Thanks, sir. I just wanted to say that maybe trade, like encouraging trade is important as well. Encouraging what? Trades, like yeah. trades. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's another point. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, what are your thoughts on antique? Would you classify that as a domestic or terrorist organization? Antique what? Antique. Antique. Yeah, we, we may have to look at it. I don't have the answer, but you know, they're supposed to. Yeah, last night. Yeah, they're supposed to do it too. Yeah, they have a right to protest. Yes, in Canada. But protesting is peaceful. That's the most important. But I won't go there. I won't go there right now. Okay, so. Um, what about uh, uh, restoring our right to self defense? Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we must be sure that the uh, RCMP would be there and when something happens in your house, and yes, you have the right to defend yourself and use the reasonable forces to do that. And right now, we're making it uh, crystal clear. If I get hit with a hammer, do I, have, do I still have to respond with just using my fist, or can I respond with with it must be absolutely it must be case by case but the most important we cannot the legislator the politician we are making law and the enforcement of the law is the RCMP but then we have to be independent but also we can have a strict directive and, and the RCMP that Canadian it's in the charter of rights you have the right to defend yourself and using reasonable forces and we can and we can we can focus on that. We can ask this RCMP to focus on that, but we cannot interfere in, in the case.